This video is sponsored by you and your incredibly generous support on Patreon. Help me continue to make videos, get early access to completely ad-free uploads, your name in the credits and more by heading to patreon.com slash writingongames. Thank you so much and now on with the show. Look, I adored Yakuza Like a Dragon, despite not being the biggest fan of JRPGs generally. One thing I really enjoyed about it was that for the first time in an RGG Studios game, they managed to make the streets feel legitimately dangerous. As Kasuga woke up in the back alleys of Yokohama, far from home, freshly betrayed, stripped of everything in a place he didn't know, he, and by extension the player, found themselves coming up against truly tough, high-level foes early on, making for a scenario where you really had to watch watch your every step. It was a continuation of what I've always maintained is the team's real penchant for mechanical, systemic storytelling. It could get tense. Cut to a year later though, and you have the now iconic buddy cop duo of Yagami and his ex-Yakuza pal Kaito stepping onto the exact same map, almost untouched from last year's main series outing. And within a minute of leaving the train station, the thugs of Yokohama are literally cowering at the feet of our heroes as I send their pals flying across the screen switching up styles on the fly and creating some delightfully cinematic moments that were entirely within my control, without even resorting to the numerous EX actions designed explicitly for that purpose. At this stage, my excitement for Lost Judgment had really reached fever pitch. As much as I appreciated how well the JRPG systems were implemented in last year's game, that more immediate real-time combat, now massively expanded alongside the scope of basically every system in the entire game, was such a welcome blast of familiar familiarity as I was able to wipe out these hordes in such visceral fashion. Truly, I was playing the sequel to 2019's best game. I loved the original Judgment, despite its imperfections and the fact it wasn't nearly as big a departure from the developer's roots as they might have hoped it would be, the story and characters, and crucially the way mechanics would convey that character, made for a tale that was completely engrossing in its own way, separate to the series it spun off from. So needless to say, when it was revealed that a sequel was on its way that would see Yagami and Co taking on a brand new case, I was fully ready to don that belt buckle riddled leather jacket one more time. And after dozens of hours spent with it, I can safely say that I had a really good time with Lost Judgment. Almost every aspect of the game has been made bigger in some way. If the original was a proof of concept for a different vision of the tried and true Yakuza framework, then up front it would seem as if Lost Judgment is a step in the right direction to more firmly establish its own identity. You can move between two massive open world environments pretty much at will. Your investigation will see you entering a school to put a stop to a bullying problem, which in turn opens up a whole wealth of potential storylines and activities that could feasibly take you away from the main narrative for vast stretches of time, largely setting aside the Ace Attorney homage of its predecessor in favour of the ultimately more convincing pastiche of Persona, right down to the funky soundtrack. Those detective mechanics are completely rearranged as well, with a much greater focus on parkour and stealth to sneak around. Still extremely rigid in their own way, sure, but certainly less prone to outright breakage as the numerous tailing missions were previously the second you went off script. In fact, here, if you were just to mainline the story and do nothing else, I'm fairly sure you'd only come up against one or two actual tailing missions here, and even they've been tightened up slightly with new and hilarious features that play into Yagami's fun-loving side a bit more. On paper, this all reads like a distinct improvement over its original. It's just that despite that enjoyment I mentioned previously, I can't deny that overall there were a few stumbling blocks here and there that left me feeling just a little emptier than when I came away from 2019's game, most notably in the execution of its larger plot. Without spoiling anything, if there's one way I can describe the story of Lost Judgment and how it's delivered, the word that comes to mind is messy. You likely already know at this stage that RGG games are sprawling, labyrinthine affairs that more often than not struggle to maintain their narrative integrity towards their conclusions. The still incredibly enjoyable bombast of these endings belying the fact that they're having to bring in all these different planes to land with so many disparate characters and scenarios, complicated further by obligatory wild twists. Again, more often than not, the team pulls it off despite how crazy it can all get, but I usually come away from these games with my head spinning. <laughs> by comparison, Lost Judgment had me feeling this exhaustion, confusion after just two or three chapters. It's not 
not bad by any means, it just gets pretty over the top fairly quickly. In some ways it speaks to how engrossing just inhabiting these characters in their day to day can be. The, the early focus on the school bullying investigation and the political games being played underneath it all led me to totally forget about the inciting incident of this whole thing that itself flies off the rails. It's just that with all these different characters and organisations and competing interests the game keeps bombarding you with, right through to its conclusion, you might start to get the vibe that in a narrative sense everything feels far more fragmented here than it did in the last game. And I think this comes down to the fact that, well, it's a sequel to a fairly self-contained story. One which, by the way, I really would implore new players to check out before touching the sequel, and crucially, one which kind of solved the internal struggle of our protagonist, where in a legal system in which over 99% of cases that go to trial result in a guilty verdict, Yagami found himself stuck between his roles as a detective and lawyer, with the former's need to find the truth butting up against the latter's need to win cases. A subtle but meaningful distinction in an environment where keeping up appearances is often as important as actually doling out justice. It was a push and pull compounded by Yagami's own past as a disgraced lawyer, with the game masterfully navigating that nuance as you're never quite sure whether his complete dedication to the case is some righteous fight to get to the truth or merely a nihilistic deflection from confronting his own issues, a plunge into oblivion. But the thing is, like I say, Yagami had kind of figured himself out, and in Lost Judgment we see our protagonist attacking this case with a newfound resolve. He may brandish his lawyer pin when it suits, but the detective in him has clearly won out. The truth matters above all. He no longer has the same kinds of demons eating away at him. Said demons are briefly referenced from time to time, but never as anything he's actually struggling with, more a piece of his past that informs his present confidence. You can see this in the game's systems, where the excellent mechanical storytelling I previously talked about gets muddied in the jumble of new and altered systems. Before, you were incentivized to engage in Yagami's more self-destructive habits, smoking and drinking, cornerstones of the pulpy noir detectives that clearly clearly inspired his character, built up your EX meter more efficiently, to the point that I would avoid eating because the health benefits would sometimes be outweighed by simply sobering Yagami up, meaning I would then have to find a way to drink again. Here though, Yagami is a more accomplished combatant from the off, with an all new fighting style and vastly increased moveset bolstered by a frankly staggering list of upgrades, allowing you to really define your own fighting style, perhaps more than any other Yakuza game. It also feels a lot easier than the original generally. The system where you'd need to fix your health bar after taking heavy damage is gone now. I never found myself short on healing items or money, and on normal difficulty, I think I only died in combat once, by accident after incorrectly inputting a quick time event, with the extended EX gauge making remarkably light work of even the game's toughest encounters. The truly important aspect of this though is that I barely ever drank my entire playthrough. Outside of cutscenes, I didn't smoke once where before I was puffing away like crazy. Sure, these are all gameplay markers of Yagami being more self-assured this time round, but it also makes this romp feel less like Yagami's story as a result, and the game struggles to fill that space. You know, just whose story is it? Don't get me wrong, Yagami is still a really fantastic character, and despite the similarities to the series the game spun off from, the very clear differences in characterization between Judgment's cast versus Yakuza gave me real feelings of joy as I realised I was going to get to be a part of this unique crew once more. The original judgement got super crazy as it went along as well. I doubt anyone would be able to guess at the start where that game ended up plot wise. It's just that without that real deep personal struggle at the core of it all, Lost Judgement definitely comes across more as another wacky installment in Yagami and Kaito's crazy adventures. The messiness of the plot is a little more front and centre here. The struggle instead is largely thematic in nature, and it's a pretty heavy one at that, even if it's dealt with in the typical Yakuza fashion of extreme action and drama. In this sense, past the flurries of punches and the inconceivable amounts of enemies and the idea that supposedly taking it easy on a group of high school bullies still sees you smacking them over the head with a bat, you could view Lost Judgment as something of an ongoing debate about what justice actually means, especially in the modern age where the law is struggling to keep up with technology. One thing the game is explicitly clear about from the off, and in keeping with the first game, is the fact that the legal system is broken and fails to protect those that need it. Going on 
on to present multiple different perspectives on how to fix it, how justice should work, and spends a long time exploring those different ideas. Maybe it's a weird comparison, but much like season 4 of The Wire, the violence and drama isn't necessarily so far removed from what came before in other games. But it's the fact it's often happening directly to children here that makes it feel all the more harrowing. It's not like we've not seen the effects of political decisions on kids in the Yakuza universe before, obviously, but here it's so much more direct, violent. It gets raw at points, to the extent that if stark portrayals of bullying and talk of suicide get to you, maybe check in on yourself and make sure you're ready for this ride. The game pulls zero punches in that regard. Further though, it also gets clumsy at points, with said extremity of its plot revelations, melodrama, and some truly daft twists even by RGG stand sometimes slipping over into downright farce, acting at odds with the weight of the subject matter being dealt with. But even when it fumbles some of those more delicate topics, and outside of a couple of notable systems rearing their ugly head once again from the first game, it never feels like it's coming from anything other than an earnest place, a genuine human concern as to how we navigate these darker aspects of society, never shying away from the idea that things are never as black and white as they seem, that justice is always going to be a messy, fragmented, clumsy affair, and it rarely works out perfectly for all involved. There are no definitive answers, and those that claim otherwise, even if their hearts are in the right place, are deluding themselves, resulting in more people getting hurt. It's an imperfect narrative for sure, with plenty of pacing issues, as well as a frankly odd view of how young people use technology that definitely seems as if it was written by an older person, as well as the game threatening to buckle under the weight of its disparate threads and themes, but it's testament to just how dedicated the game is to exploring, marinating in that complicated central theme, as well as just how fun its characters still are, that by its conclusion I still found myself with that lump in my throat that only RGG games can give me. Look, I don't do review scores, but for the sake of argument, if the original judgement was a 9 or 10 out of 10, then Lost Judgement is firmly an 8. While its mechanical shifts might make it seem like an evolution in every way past the original judgement, its bungling of certain issues, both in terms of its systems and narrative, still leave it feeling like a series that despite how enjoyable the game is, and the fact that Judgement might actually be my favourite RGG title, is still trying to find its own feet under the grand shadow of the Yakuza series. A which, thanks to legal wrangling of its own, we may unfortunately never see the series fully attain. Indeed, this might be the end of the road for Judgment as a franchise, but I want to reiterate that if that's a game you loved as much as I did, you're probably still going to get that same kind of kick from just hanging out with that motley crew of detectives one more time. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, as well as check out my podcast and Twitch, links in the description. I'd also like to thank my patrons here, without whose support I would never be able to make videos like this. If you've enjoyed any of the videos I've put out and want to help the channel continue so I can keep making more, you can directly help out as well as get things like early access to completely ad-free video uploads by heading to patreon.com slash writing on games and pledging only what you feel comfortable with. I am forever thankful for your support in whatever form it takes. Special thanks go to Mark B. Writing, Artyom Vitsyuk, Shardfire, Spike Jones, Jesse Ryan, Dallas Keane, Timothy Jones, Charlie Kimball, Tom Webster, Tommy Carver Chaplin, Winter, David Bjork, Lucas, Bryce Snyder, Dr. Motorcycle, The Nameless Guy, Henry Milek, Hebe Amori, Lea Cinello, Ruth Knapman, Nicholas Villeneuve, Captain Knusprich, Dennis Sikowskis, Jordan Midler, Max Cohen, and Charlie Yang. And with that, this has been another episode of Writing on Games. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all next time.